Um, so, uh, uh, my name is Mike Percy. I am a software engineer at Cloudera and a Twitter and PMC member on Apache Boot, and, uh, which is a new open source storage engine. Um, I wanted to uh, um, just thank uh, the organizers, thank you Priyanka, thank you Nitta and, and Cask um, and uh, Ample for, uh, for inviting me. Appreciate it. Um, I always love to uh, get a chance to talk about, about Kudu. Um, so, uh, 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 so, uh, so, yeah, um, I've been at Cloudera for about four years, just a little bit about me, I've been at Cloudera for about four years, um, and uh, I, uh, uh, prior to that I was at Yahoo, um, uh, with a, a bunch of guys here actually. Um, so, um, so first of all, um, just to ask a couple of questions, uh, so who here uh, like has used Hadoop or does use Hadoop today? Just to get an idea. Okay. So maybe uh, probably like seventy-five percent of the room, something like that. Um, and uh, how many people um, have heard of Kudu or kind of have an idea of what Kudu is? Okay. So maybe closer to like forty percent of, of the room, maybe thirty-five percent of the room. Um, okay. And just a couple more questions. Um, does anybody know what a kudu is? Wait, uh, sorry. <laughs> it's what? Okay, that's true. What about what about a kudu as in like nothing? <laughs> a physical like Impala. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's kind of like an Impala. It's like an Impala family. It's an antelope. It's an African antelope um, on the African savannas. Um, and uh, they have these uh, stripes, they have these stripes, and the, the males have these big crazy spiral horns. That, that, that. Okay, last question, I promise. Uh, does anybody know why this project is called Kudu? Uh, it's next to the Small and faster than Paula. that's... No, not really. really. <laughs> Speed? Uh, Speed? Okay, yeah, that's a good, that, yeah, these are all good ideas, these are all good reasons, and these, uh, Except for the smaller and faster and polar thing, they're all these are all like good, 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 like good properties uh, that, that that were considered. The one, the, the main reason, I guess, at least in the mythology, is uh, the vertical stripes. So, Kudu is a columnar database. If you can imagine, your table has these columnar stripes. So you write, you know, instead of writing them onto disk, each row at a time, you write the column at a time. So, enough of that. So, okay, so, um, so I just want to talk to you guys today about, uh, sort of hit the high points, this is a short talk, so I want to see if I can do it in about 20 minutes. Um, so it's, okay, so we're going to start off with why do we build Kudu, what are the motivations behind a uh, new storage engine? Um, some use cases that we think it's really suited for, uh, the technical design, so a little bit of this, this is a whirlwind tour, it's like a three slide internals deck, uh, and uh, sort of some, some benchmarks, and then how to get started, how to try it out. Um, okay, so this is sort of the why. So what did, you know, where were we at before Kudu? Or, or where are we at today if you consider, you know, things that are um, on a really mature uh, product? Because Kudu is a four month old, um, you know, as a, as a I mean, we've been working on it for longer than that, but it's been out for about four months. It's, an, it's a beta product. So, um, so this is sort of our, uh, sort of our business chart. So probably get in trouble if you, you know, post this in an academic paper, or like turn it into your teacher. Uh, there are no units to this graph, but uh, on the left um, is analytics. So how good is something for like fast scans and analytics? And on the bottom is, uh, is how uh, fast random access, so being able to you know, um, seek and, and update and delete individual records and stuff like that. So um, as many of you are aware, HDFS doesn't uh, do a very good job of really being able to support seeking and like updating files and stuff like that. It's really a write once kind of a system. And uh, but pair with something like Parquet or like ORC file, for example, you can get really fast scans. You can do really fast SQL analytics. You can do really fast aggregations um, because these are columnar formats that are strongly typed, and so the encodings are smartly done and stuff like that. Um, so really good for scanning and match. Um, on the other end of the spectrum is HBase and also Cassandra for these uh, big table based systems. And by the way, these are based on papers that came out in the 2000s from Google. And uh, 
So HBase um, is designed to be able to mutate individual rows, seek very fast, sort of provide the features that uh, the HDFS provides uh, uh, for, uh, with, with Parquet, uh, sorry, provide the features that uh, HDFS and Parquet can't provide. Um, so, but it's not as good at scanning large amounts of data. Um, and if you compare like the scan speed of like an ORC file aggregation uh, with, a, with a MacRoost job or something versus HBase, you'll, you'll see this, that HBase is more write optimized and more seek optimized. So Kudu is designed to sort of fit in this gap where you want to be able to have high throughput for big scans. You want your, uh, and so our goal is within 2x the speed of Parquet while also providing low latency for random access. So be able to optimize for like big analytical queries, but allow you to still mutate and seek to individual records and sort of data delete. Um, in order to achieve this, uh, we also um, chose to make it a relational data model. And this simplifies a lot of things and enables a lot of things. Um, and if you, you recognize that Parquet, Avro, and uh, ORC file, these are all strongly schema-based um, Based formats. Um, so um, it allows us to do a lot of nice things, but basically we wanted to easily integrate with SQL engines like Impala, Drill, Hive, um, and also provide no SQL access. So like APIs that let you do individual inserts and updates and deletes from your language of your choice. Um, so before I uh, get into more details, just really quickly wanted to share with you where we see uh, Kudu fitting in the overall Kudu ecosystem. So it doesn't replace HDFS because it's not storage, uh, it's, it's not a file system. It's a, it's a relational storage engine. Um, so HDFS you know, allows you to create new files and seek fast and stuff like that. Um, it doesn't require schemas. Um, on the other side of the, of the spectrum, you know, HBase, it also does not replace HBase. Um, HBase is really good at uh, providing big table style, like loose schema uh, access, really fast random uh, reads, updates, and writes. And um, Kudu will never be as fast as HBase at random access. So we think it fits neatly in the middle of those two uh, as a complementary system. Um, so what is it? It's tabular. Um, you have tables. It feels like MySQL kind of regular tables with schemas and columns that you predefine. Um, but it's highly scalable. So we're talking you know, billions of rows, hundreds of billions of rows, and uh, and uh, thousands of nodes. And so we've tested uh, so far on nearly 300 nodes, a three, uh, three petabyte clusters. Um, so it really scales up. It's also very fast, very efficient. It's written C++, so it's very CPU efficient. And, uh, and uh, so you can get multiple gigabytes per second read throughput uh, on a single node, um, but uh, while simultaneously uh, being able to have millions of, of read and write operations per second sort of across your cluster. Um, so each table is a SQL-like schema, as I mentioned. There are a bunch of data types that you can uh, define as part of your schema. Booleans, integers, floats, strings, timestamps. Uh, we're working on adding more. Uh, decimal will come at some point. Um, and uh, you define a primary key. So you can just have like an ID column if you like, or you can define maybe you want a composite key, maybe timestamp then. Uh, ID or timestamp on something else. Um, also, a fast alter table operation was important to us. Um, so you can alter the table online. You don't have to, and it takes maybe a few seconds or something like that um, on like a typical cluster. So you just start the alter table and you can continue writes and scans and stuff like that. And you know, you can add um, a new column that's nullable or something. And it'll just appear, you know, it'll just be there after a few seconds. You don't have to bring a cluster down. Um, no SQL APIs, as I mentioned. Java, Python, and C++ are available. Python's still a little sort of experimental, but um, it, it's uh, been getting better lately. Um, and we have integrations with MapReduce, Apache Spark, Apache Impala. Um, and also, uh, the Dremio guys uh, um, implemented uh, Apache Drill integration. Um, it's still kind of a, with us. It's still kind of a work in progress, uh, but, it, but it works. Um, so, um, okay, so let me talk a little bit about the use cases that uh, Qt is a good fit for. So really anything that's very scan heavy, very analytics heavy, you wanna do big aggregations, you wanna do SQL queries like select ID from some big table where you have some predicate or something like that, um, and, uh, and uh, the columnar aspect of the database will really shine 
on those workloads because when you're scanning, um, you only have to read the columns that you care about, that you're either returning or that you're comparing against. You don't have to read like all of the rows that, um, that you don't really care about with your query. Um, so time series workloads are a good example. Fraud detection, risk monitoring, these kinds of things where you have, may have old data streaming in periodically, getting updated, um, out of order. Uh, you want to mutate stuff, but you also want really fast analytics. Um, for OTP style workloads, you know, maybe that's, that's not really the best fit, but for like an analytical workload where you are getting updates, you do want to make corrections. Um, insert heavy, then um, we think Kudu is really going to be a great fit. Um, so, like tri uh, online reporting, traditional data warehousing type stuff that doesn't require transactions, since Kudu doesn't have transactions yet, then uh, those are a good those are a good use case as well. Um, network threat detection and stuff like that. So, one use case that uh, I wanted to present today is the Xiaomi use case. So, uh, Xiaomi is the largest smartphone maker in China. They're um, they're growing at a, an, an amazing rate. Uh, they were at five billion, five billion records per day uh, in September, and um, their growth rate is, is just really strong. And um, so, so what they wanted, so what they're using Kudu for, actually these guys are in production now, so they recently told us that they went to production with 75 nodes, um, and, uh, and it's working out for them pretty well. They, uh, one of their developers um, has been working with us as they run into issues, and um, he's been fixing stuff, we've been fixing stuff, hasn't been um, too terrible for them. It's actually been pretty good for them overall. Um, but they're the first production user. And uh, so what they wanted to do is essentially gather events from uh, cell phones uh, and from their services and essentially be able to uh, uh, drive alerting and monitoring if there are problems with their services. So they want to know, are they meeting their SLAs? Are people getting good coverage? Um, are their services going down? And so they want to drive multiple use cases from this. They, uh, alerting, as I mentioned, dashboards for their ops people and tools for their support people and their ops people to sort of diagnose what's going on and drill down. So their previous pipeline uh, looked like this. So essentially, uh, this data source, so imagine that this is a bunch of different data sources. So it's the cell phones, it's the different uh, communication services, the cell towers and stuff like that. And so this stuff is all coming into the system and uh, scribe for stuff that uh, needs to, uh, that doesn't have its own sort of back pressure handling, and HBase for stuff that has its own queue and so it can sort of handle backing up as needed. And then they would run these Spark jobs and, and, and Hive jobs to uh, ETL this stuff and sort of enrich the data as needed and store it into Parquet for, um, for online reporting, uh, for sort of like real-time ad hoc analysis. And then they would also uh, generate reports and stuff like that. And then, um, so that's what their tools use. And as you can see on the right, you know, their, their, their main problems were that they had a huge data visibility latency for their ETL pipelines. Um, and because of all the conversions, that was pretty tricky. And one big thing that they had a problem with was that uh, these cell phones, they would, um, might be offline for hours or days at a time. Maybe they lost a battery, maybe they were out in the coverage area. So they'd come back into the coverage area and they would report back like a bunch of stuff for the last two days. So in order to make sure that they were able to record on a whole day, they would have to query three days of data in order to make sure that they probably had the data for that day. So with Kudu, um, it really simplified their, uh, their use case because they were, they were able to scan directly from Kudu and they were able to update in real time from Kudu for this use case. So, um, so they have an ETL pipeline. It's a streaming ETL pipeline. They're using Storm and Kafka. And uh, so this is for the data that needs to be enriched. And then they also have the direct, uh, the direct route for stuff that, uh, for services that have, its, have their own queues and can handle back pressure. And then um, they use Impala for all of their analytics and, and they can also use the NoSQL access to directly access records in Kudu as well. And so they got their ETL pipeline down to a 10 second data latency and they also have the zero latency path um, that you know means they can go through SQL, they can go through Impala, they can query Kudu, and um, if something happened one second ago, they'll still see it. Uh, they did a little benchmark. So by the way, these are their slides. Um, so um, so they selected six queries that like were important to them for their use case. So this is just sort of a representative sample of what what they were doing uh, with their reporting, and uh, so they ran those and sort of compared them against Parquet. 
And um, this data set, um, uh, I believe, did fit in memory. However, you can see that actually Kudu outperformed uh, Parquet for a uh, majority of these queries. Okay, I have, what, five, I have like five minutes. So let me go through like a uh, whirlwind tour of how Kudu works. So Kudu um, has, a per has, a, so has partitioning. So it's, it's tables and tablets, and each table is partitioned into, into multiple tablets. Now you can either do range partitioning like HBase, where you can say, okay, these are my split points, and these are my, uh, you know, these are the keys that I split on, um, or we can do what's called hash partitioning, which is sort of just like native support for solving. So, um, so the, in the picture, I'm showing just uh, sort of like a tweets table and uh, partitioning based on the primary key, um, range partitioning. Um, what I'm not showing is the hash uh, is an example of a hash partitioned thing, but you can imagine that the keys would be basically random um, uh, in terms of which buckets they fell into, and uh, it should be even. And uh, this is an example of sort of like a partial syntax, a partial create table syntax of how Impala does it, where you create table, blah, 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 where primary key, tweet ID, distribute by hash, tweet ID into 100 buckets, so it's also create 100, 100 tablets uh, hashed on the tweet ID. And so if you want to uh, use a compound key, you can do that as well. Uh, this is just sort of a simple case. Um, in terms of fault tolerance, I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So each tablet is its own ref consensus group. So Kudu is strongly consent, str has, uh, strongly consistent because of the use of raft and uh, sort of uh, con strong consensus. Um, a single tablet server is the process that Kudu runs for, like you can imagine it like a data node process. And uh, the tablets, there are a bunch of tablets on a single tablet server. And then there's also a master process. You, may, you would probably put the master on its own machines, um, or you, you might want to do that. And then you would have a master process that runs the master tablet. The master tablet is just a special tablet that holds schema information and metadata. So um, with Raft, uh, there's leader election, sort of like Zookeeper style, and uh, typically people would use three replicas or something like that um, for, for a hot, uh, hot fit. Really quick on the master, um, and this is sort of the last detail that I'll give uh, on, uh, for this talk. Uh, on the impl implementation is that uh, the master works as a tablet directory, so like where are my tablets, which are the tablet servers that host these different tablets, um, catalogs, what are my schemas, what are my tables, what are my split points, what are, you know, all that kind of stuff. And it also acts as a load balancer. So if the master detects that uh, tablet um, server has crashed, then it will, uh, re after a certain period of time, by default five minutes, it'll re-replicate that and it'll sort of self-feel the cluster and say, you know what, that tablet server isn't coming back, let me uh, change the raft configuration and like add, in, you know, add one of the live servers to that pool and then bring everybody back up to full. Um, uh, and it's also super fast. So under heavy load, like the 99.9 .9, uh, percentile response time uh, for um, a heavily loaded uh, master under a stress test we did was 650 microseconds. And the 99th percentile was like 65 microseconds. So it's, it's all cached in memory. It's durable, but it's also cached in RAM. So it's, it, we don't think it'll ever be a bottleneck because um, the CPU utilization on this test was like 2% for, uh, I think it was a 70 node cluster, just hammering it. Um, so, um, and the way the client, and the client gets the metadata from the master, and then it caches it. So the master is not in the data path. So when you're writing something, you, you, you read from the master once, you say, hey, you know, where are the tablets? Then you write straight to the tablets, you never talk to the master again, unless your cache is uh, out of date. Um, so, okay, so let me give two quick examples. Um, so there's a Spark integration, and it kind of looks like this. You say, okay, you know, uh, this is the class I'm loading, and this is where the master is, and then you can start formulating Spark SQL queries, and you can run Spark jobs, um, against Kudu as a data source, and, uh, and it'll work. It's a work in progress. Uh, we're working on getting it sort of like totally cleaned up and committed uh, upstream uh, for Kudu, but, but uh, it works today, and it's been working for a while. Um, also, Impala integration. Um, so this is just SQL, um, and essentially you can create tables, you can insert, update, delete, you can um, do all the stuff that you would, it sort of feels like MySQL with um, MyISAM or something. It sort of feels like, like MySQL with no transactions. Um, 
It also has predicate pushdown and this GAM parallelism and a bunch of optimizations, um, and they're working on more optimizations on the call site. Now, the drill usage looks actually very similar as well. Um, so, quick benchmarks. Um, so, here's, I'm not going to show, uh, I'm going to run through these super fast, but uh, TPCH is a data warehousing style benchmark. As these big nasty queries with like joins and all these predicates and all this stuff, so um, it's just a it's just a industry standard benchmark. So this is in RAM. So um, take it with a grain of salt. Um, but uh, 75 node cluster, uh, TPCH scale factor 100, uh, and uh, essentially uh, you can see that um, our goal was to uh, be twice as bad as Parquet. Um, and in this example, uh, Kudu's beating Parquet by 30 uh, percent. Average. Um, we have done some benchmarks uh, without uh, being in uh, in uh, RAM resident as well, and uh, it gets closer to like the two x factor. So Parquet is faster right now. Um, it will probably stay faster um, uh, by maybe a factor of two x. Now this is uh, comparing to Phoenix. Uh, now this is uh, just to show that essentially Phoenix um, is uh, faster at random access. And that um, essentially Phoenix is an OTP uh, engine built on top of HBase. That uh, the, there will be a talk about this on Phoenix later. Um, and essentially, this is a, so this is a log scale graph. And here you can kind of see that with 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 the queries that we tested, so TPCH for example, um, Kudu was like 20 times faster on TPCH query one, um, like count star like multiple times faster. Um, 50x faster, whereas like with single row lookup and random access and stuff like that, then Phoenix is like three times, four, three or four times faster than Kudu for random access. And you gotta also keep in mind that Phoenix has transactions and other stuff. This was run with Phoenix 4.2. Uh, I don't know if things have like changed. I read some stuff that um, Phoenix has been adding some optimizations. But anyway, this is kind of the, the point that we, um, that we, uh, th th but this is kind of why we built Kudu is because like for, Columnar uh, access, you can really get big benefits for certain types of workloads, and so this this uh, this shows that. Um, and Parquet, it's 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 uh, you can see for yourself. Um, uh, so okay, so I'm kind of out of time. So let me just uh, wrap it up. The uh, so here's the project status. Uh, Kudu, the first the first version was released in September uh, 2015. Uh, we've been working on it for a few years uh, prior to that. Um, the latest version is uh, 0.6 that came out uh, a couple of months ago, and um, so um, it's actually pretty good. It's relatively stable. We haven't seen nobody's seen any data loss problems, um, and we have uh, one 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 group has it in production. Um, it you, you will probably still find bugs. It's still beta software. Like we're still ironing out some issues and sort of like filing off the sharp edges. Um, next month we're planning on releasing uh, another version. And uh, recently, uh, uh, Kudu was accepted into the ASF incubator, so um, now it's an Apache project. As a user, um, the first thing, the first place I would uh, sort of direct you to is the website getkudu.io. Um, there's a, also a user mailing list. Um, there's also, if you prefer to like real-time chat, we uh, like the developers and a bunch of people hang out in the Slack chat room uh, uh, for Kudu, and, and you can just get in by clicking that link. And um, that's also posted on the Kudu website under community. And uh, there's also a technical white paper. If you want all the details that I didn't have time to cover today, including how we do like flushes and compactions, how all of the fault tolerance stuff works in detail, it's all in this PDF. And uh, finally, if you want to download it, then there are a bunch of ways. Uh, the Quick Start VM, we have like a virtual box VM. You can just download it and start running it. It's got an all on Kudu uh, set up already. So you can play with it and get a feel of it. Um, there are also young app repos, and for people who run Cloud Air Manager, then you can download a CSD and it'll automatically install it via parcels on your cluster. So, uh, pretty low overhead way to install it and try it out. Um, if you want to get started as a developer, uh, then all the source code is actually online. It's an Apache project. We're in the middle of migrating everything to Apache. So, this is sort of half Apache, half not right now, but uh, we're working on it. But anyway, all the source code, uh, you can find it here on GitHub. Everything goes upstream, nothing's like done in the secret. Um, here are all the code reviews, it's on, we use Garrett, and this just gets updated in real time, we all go through there. Uh, the public Jira, we took all of our old Jiras and um, made them public. So if you want to read about 
of discussions we had, you know, two years ago, then you can go and look at Kudu, you know, 30 or whatever. Um, and the nice thing is all of the references in the source code have not, you know, are still there, so that's why we did it. Um, there's also a developer mailing list, and um, so it's an Apache project, remember, and uh, so, you know, we're looking for contributors, we'd love to have more contributors, and, uh, you know, so you can, you know, become a committer. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so, uh, so that's it, that's all I had. Uh, so, um, any questions? Yeah? Uh, have you guys done any uh, right throughput, um, yeah, I guess like the closest I would say is the load one. Um, so it's sort of on par for inserts with um, with like HBase, or uh, similar, similar with HBase for, for loads. Um, as for inserts, for updates, Kudu's a little slower because um, it does some optimizations um, that I don't really have time to get into, but uh, it does some opti like read optimization. So updates are a little slower than uh, than inserts. Yeah. So, so what are the APIs that are available for processing data into? Are there any new APIs that are available that are available for HBase compatible workflow or that? No, we um, we weren't able to make um, HBase compatible APIs because HBase doesn't require a schema. <laughs> um, and we uh, don't uh, directly uh, supply like SQL access. So the SQL access comes from uh, Impala or Drill or in the future Hive. So if you want JDBC access, then you would go through those systems to access Kudu. Uh, is it bounded to HDFS like HBase? In addition, what do you use for resource management? Like for instance, you know, Impala cannot use CR and use the same thing. So what do you use for that? Um, so uh, so the first question is, does it use HDFS? Yes. The answer is no. Um, it uses local disks, so it'll go to like ext4 or something like that. And the main reason is because we're using RAF consensus and we're using the consensus log for well, sort of a transaction log and also for um, uh, sort of leader management. And so um, we, didn't, we, weren't, we wouldn't have really gotten the benefit from using uh, a chain replication system like HDFS in the case, based on the architecture. What was the second question? Second, what do you use for resource management? Source? Uh, okay. Resource. Resource. Oh, resource manager. Kind of like the R or okay. Lama or whatever. I see. Uh, it's not currently integrated with the resource manager, so you can like specify how much RAM you want to give it and stuff like that. So you need to use like Mesos or something or just configure that? In yeah, you can use uh, you can use Mesos and you know something that uh, sort of like you know goes underneath Kudu, but today it's not integrated with uh, specifically integrated with resource manager. Uh, are there any plans? Uh, yeah, it, it, it would happen. Uh, I don't. I, I can't say when. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, hit, uh, hit you first, and then. And then the so, is it possible to integrate with Storm? And if so, is there like any open source available for that? Um, you could use uh, Kudu with Storm, probably just by using the Java APIs. Um, we haven't written a bolt or like a native integration with Storm, but um, but you could do it. Um, I don't think it would be very hard because it's just a matter of you're doing, you know, you're reading and writing and, um, and, uh, and uh, you know, you could use auto flush or something like that. Um, I'm not super familiar with Storm though, so, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's possible. Yeah. It does run on AWS? Can I put on cloud? Um, it would uh, run on AWS. Um, Kudu does its own replication through RAF consensus, so you would end up with, you're kind of double replicating. But um, if that doesn't bother you, or if you could put it, if you don't mind putting it on transient storage, then yeah, it'll work just fine. I think uh, probably that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, the question was, uh, how 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 large is the team that um, that was working on? Kudu with Cloudera. Right now it's uh, six people um, that are working on Kudu with Cloudera, and it's, uh, it's been sort of slowly growing over time, but it's been like three to six for a few years. Um, and uh, so the second question is how many people are migrating from HBase to Kudu? Uh, and so I, would, so I would try to stress that like, that's not really the intent. Um, so, uh, but uh, maybe if there are use cases where, you know, H, where it's, you're, you're struggling to use HBase because it's not a good use case fit, then, you know, then I guess, you know, that would make sense. But uh, we think of it as more uh, simplifying our architecture and, and sort of enabling use cases that were just really hard to do before. Um, that, so not replacing HBase. Yeah. Uh, 
But that said, um, it's uh, you know it's only been out for four months. We're not encouraging uh, like existing Cloudera customers. You know, we're not knocking on their door saying, hey, like it's like you know deploy Kuhn to production right now. Um, uh, but there are uh, we have a couple of uh, people that we're working with. Um, we're trying to like vet the use cases and make sure that the teams are like highly technical and able to tolerate some like you know beta pain um, and work with the development team to make sure that we're addressing their needs. Um, okay, uh, just, oh, two more questions. So yeah, and that's it. So well, you first have a brief question. So you said six people from Cloudera uh, work on this. Are right. there a lot of contributors outside as well? There are uh, a few contributors right now, and we would like more contributors. Um, so we're actively soliciting um, contributions, um, and we'd love more contributors. Um, there, uh, we've gotten contributions from um, maybe like since we went to the ASF, or since we've gone open source um, in the last four months. Um, there have been, I think, uh, maybe like four or five people that have contributed, and uh, one person that's contributed a lot, and another person that's contributed like non-trivially. Um, outside of sort of the core Kudu team at Cloudera. Do your customers use this a lot? We, um, as, yeah, as I mentioned, there, there's not that, uh, so the question was do your, do your customers use it a lot? And um, we are um, in the process of sort of like, you know, getting, sort of soliciting people uh, to, to use it. So, um, so not yet because we haven't been, it's, we're not considering a GA product, we're not providing support for it yet. And so that's why Cloud Air customers aren't using it a lot yet. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, one last question. You mentioned it supports sort of like SQL without transaction type syntax. Is there any other specific SQL syntax that you can say it doesn't support? Uh, yeah, okay, good question. So the question was um, is there certain SQL syntax that it supports or doesn't support? So um, uh, Kudu relies on a uh, SQL engine like Impala or Drill. That essentially it provides a layer on top of the storage that only does SQL. And so whatever those systems support, then uh, Kudu would support. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot, guys.